Onivia, League of Legends highlights. They will lock it in. The other option, of course, would have been to put something else on the top side of the map or on one of the other soul lanes mm -hmm. and flex the set into support. But against Thresh, Kogma, you know, the set it's sort of beautiful. kills with the Renekton stun. If Renekton's top in this case, maybe you can actually lock down the Lee Sen if he tries to trade aggressively. Okay, this oh might boy. be a bridge too far, though. No flash on BDD, but we do have Clid coming over as well. Fate getting a little bit low. Looking to get some of that health back. The Haymaker isn't exactly good. As First Blood comes in, Clid goes in for the kill, but now Fate looking to run down this Diana, who does have double buff, but Fate is Renekton and is easily able to win that trade and pick up the double buff for himself. Yeah. Indeed. And gone for that scuttle on the bottom side. The Diana took the top side, and now BDD's caught out again. We're going to have to see how this happened, but it just feels like he's not. So it's going to be a trade one for one here for objectives. And, and, you know, the extra gold, we'll see where that goes. If you can actually funnel that into the bottom lane, that's quite still too early for her to really carry and pop off in this fight. So see where this goes, because if Genji is able to take this streak, they're in a very nice position in this game, even with the gold deficit. So they're going to group up. See the Lee Sin coming down. All right, well, just stacking for the death sentence makes it easy. But now the teleports are coming in. Effort in an awkward spot. Rascal looking for the kill on a Prince. This is what you were talking about. There's no peel for this Cogmaw. He's going to go down eventually. Survives for a long period of time, but it does not matter. Now looking for the turn here is Lift Sandbox as Krakow comes in. And he's burning literally everybody on the bottom side as Ruler is now on the run. And Liv Sandbox, once everybody finally gets into the fight, they absolutely stomp Gen G and take down everybody but Ruler. And it's terrifying that this fight goes so well for Liv Sandbox. Despite the early lead in the fight for Gen G, they're able to take out Prince, but it just doesn't matter. Once the Renekton gets into this fight, it's all over in an instant. And this is actually a lot of extra gold going over to the Rumble, too. He's now 2-1 in mean, the Kog'Maw. Yeah. Then you just get burned to a crisp, and then there's a giant uh, crocodile as well. That's just gonna take you down. I mean, the Kogma works so well with uh, the long-range tools that you have. Back in farm, they're like, well, okay, what if we're doing Baron? What if we're actually gonna pick one of your members? Look at Summit. Yeah, he's got that angle, but Meganar is going to time out. They're looking for this tier two. They're gonna get it too. He's super low, and yeah, I mean, Gen G, as you mentioned, they just want to sit back. They want to play passively for the next seven minutes, basically. They want to wait. They have to do this because this is not Soul. But on the other hand, your comp has started to really come online. This would be, a, a, it's a very dangerous comp. You know, it's not just about the Jinx damage, it's about the front line, like we were talking about. Can you kill the Kog'Maw? Yeah. They, they know that they're not that far behind in terms of the damage with their 80 carries. But let's see if they can break through the front line and live sandbox. I think that's the first question. You've got Fate, he's got the left side, Summit's got the right side. And they're basically the bouncers to getting into the bar that is the Cloud Drake Pit. It's, it's going to be a free of a, a wonky situation in game number one, but to be in a position to, to scoop up that win is also admirable and deserves praise. You know, both of these teams are so strong defensively with their comps, especially Gen G. That this is just why how this game is going to look, right? <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. Looking for the target as the wards will come in. Krauko just going to flash. He says, no, I don't want to have to deal with potentially dying to a couple of control wards. That and that's a big fight because it's right before the Cloud Soul. Yeah. And that one Ocean Drake is getting a, a significant amount of value actually after all that chip <laughs> damage. True. <laughs> Look at Summit's position though. Look at him right now. He's behind the enemy team as the NAR comes in a three man guard on the wall. But where is the follow up? It is non existent, but at least BDD is cut off from his team. But so is Summit as they both go into their stopwatches. They will trade their lives. But look at this! Look at the health bars on the side of Gen Z. They Way can't fight low. after that one, and Live Sandbox will take the Cloud Soul. Absolutely, the trade you want to take here in the one for one here. If you're Live Sandbox, they're going to take the Cloud Soul, and they're going to try to rotate over to Baron too. Prince gets so much damage that he can actually kind of solo this as they rotate away. He's got a Lantern here too. Gen Z looking to set up. No vision here. Okay, if they can blow up Fate, maybe that's the play. But he Start has stop a watch. stop watch. There you go. There it is again, the best item in the game, as now we're trying to assassinate Ruler. And Renekton takes down the Braum. This is just finally, the tension has been ripped out of this game as Liv Sandbox take everything, and now they're going to get the Baron. They're going to get the Baron too, and Genji know it. Rasko's going to try to get a mid turret for this. I mean, that's that's your only consolation prize. 
Glid had the back, it was way too low to do anything. Maybe he'll catch the top wave, but Liv Sandbox can now very comfortably sit back and then, you know, regroup here and then head towards some inhibitor potential takes here. Uh, this is going to be some extra gold, but that's way less significant than the pushing power of the... Totally wide open. The Cloud Soul is here, the Baron is here. Liv Sandbox have everything. The poke potential from their team is massive. It'll be very difficult for Genji to ever find a quality engage at this point in time. Yeah, we might have to see the Nexus turret fight, honestly, here for Genji to have a hope of coming back. Look at this. It's what I was talking about before, the Equalizer and the Living, living Artillery Rulers at half health. You, you just have to go straight back into the Fountain, heal up, and look for that Nexus turret fight. Maybe Set has a Miracle engage. The Sandbox are not going to look for that big of a, of a collapse here because, you know, why, why would they? Why do they have to force us? They can just retreat, regroup, and then rinse and repeat here. Ability can run away with some lanes at some points. We saw that in game two, but hasn't really been able to do much in this pretty passive game. Hasn't found any picks, hasn't had any big disengages onto the engaging Live Sandbox members. It's another one of those games, too, where it's been such a great team effort from Live Sandbox. You know, from the beginning, we saw a lot of extra help given to Renekton in mid. Now you're seeing incredible engages from Summit in the late game. I mean, it's hard to pinpoint, like, one player is carrying the team. No, they're playing their composition so well. What a terrifying Live Sandbox we're watching right now. Yeah. Like, not just the state of the game, but just with, like, they don't make mistakes right now in this game. Yeah. A lot of teams in the LCK are kind of leaning into that as a big equalizer. Finally, BDD is just going to go in for it and immediately die as he tried to do something. That wasn't Maybe it. he could have waited for the Nexus turrets, but I think the result would have been very similar. As now they're going to be knocking on the door of this Nexus. They clear out the waves very well. And you see Rascal find, trying to find something to do. Prince? will die just like that. You can see that ruler is incredibly fed at this point in time. The rocket is not enough to kill him, but it will push Liv Sandbox back and give Gen.G another chance. One more chance is all they're going to get. They haven't yet. They're very confident to take this win in the team fight. Just take down the last inhibitor potentially, or even just the turret and go with that. I mean, it looks like Genji might have survived long enough to get a, an Elder Drake fight here. It's certainly on the cards right now. Yeah, uh, survives. The flanking Rascal trying to come in, but Summit just able to hop away from that one. And the death sentence would have been exactly that, but he does have the stopwatch as the engage Eight. comes in. Nice counter engage. The Diana goes in, and they get the Wombo yeah, combo. Gee. They get the back line. They fight Prince, but Fate is still alive. And now it's Summit 1v4, but he can't do it. And have they actually taken back this game? They need to potentially save their base. Oh, as Rascal's going to go back. They have to make the call. Rascal's going to go back. They're going to group for the Elder. There's still all of the inner turrets up right now, not to mention the uh, inhibitor turrets here. As this is actually going to be very frustrating to deal with. Rascal comes back here. The base will be fine. But is the Elder Drake enough is the real question. It gives Genji a lot more that they can do with the map. They can actually now clear some of the vision. They're the ones who are going to be able to make some aggressive plays now for the first time in what's been about. Yeah. That, that's the power that we've been talking about the late game. We gotta look at live. Yeah. Do we have the Baron going down here. Baron and Elder for a minute and a half. Have control over the map, so they have a lot more agency to initiate the fight instead of just waiting around for Live Sandbox to make a mistake. Fate says, well, we can't fight them straight up for the next 30 seconds. He's going to leave the Kog'Maw and the Rumble to clear the waves, as he's not going to be able to himself, and he will split push. And yeah. here comes the teleport. And he might be forced to come back if they begin to push the Nexus turrets. And that is exactly what they're going to do. They're going into this one. The teleport is coming in from the Renekton. But now Summit on the backside, they still have the Elder for 10 seconds. And now they're able to take down the Nar. And in goes the Renekton. He'll be taken out. And I think Gen.G will be able to take this game down. The Elder is just too strong for the last 10 seconds. And they make it happen in 40 minutes as they make a huge comeback to take this series and continue the undefeated.